Yeah, very good, okay? So 7.1, we went over the Pythagorean theorem. We said, hey, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And a and b have to be what? The legs. The legs. And c has to be the what? Hypotenuse. Very good. Seth, what's your question? You don't want to know what happened at 7.3. I ain't got a problem though. Anyway. Alright, so we went through and we used that in a few problems, right, to find these different um, these different measures. Do you guys remember doing that? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, hopefully you do. Yeah. Well, well, now we're going to talk about the converse. Okay, remember the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, converse means that you're going the other direction. So, the regular Pythagorean theorem said, hey, if we have a right triangle, a squared plus B squared will be C squared, as long as A and B are the legs, C is hypotenuse. Congress is going to say, hey, if three sides of a triangle, we don't know what type of triangle is, satisfy A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then they form a right triangle. So, if the three sides, you can plug them into the Pythagorean theorem and it works, it's a right triangle. If it doesn't work, it's not a right triangle, okay? Ignore this box for a moment. Let's look at example four and tell whether the triangle is a right triangle. So how would we plug these in to the Pythagorean theorem to see, is this a right triangle? Because right now we're not told it is. There's no marking here, so we can't assume. So can someone help me um, fill, uh, fill in the Pythagorean theorem with these three numbers? What would we put where? Okay, Kenny. Um, 23 squared. Very good. 23 would be our C. Why would 23 be the C here? Because it's the um, hypotenuse. Okay, if it were to be a right triangle, this one would be the hypotenuse. Okay? No, yep. Okay. Then it would be the um, uh, would be A squared. Okay. And then 20 would be B squared. Very good. Squared. So, um, we could do 11 and 20 in either of those, um, or we could do 20 squared and then 11 squared, 11 squared, then 20 squared. That doesn't matter. But the 23 has to be on the right-hand side. And notice I put a question mark above my equal sign. We're saying it equals it because we're saying we don't know if it equals. That's what we're trying to find out. If it does equal, it's the right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem works. Okay. So what is 11 squared? Close. 121. What is 20 squared? 400. 400. Think about it. Take the zero off. Two squared is four. Well, add on and what? Two more zeros because you had to square it. What do you mean? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I mean, so, like, I, I, I have a very specific morning routine, if that's what you're wondering. But it doesn't involve, like, getting in the mirror and being like, you got this. Yeah, you're ready to go. Three times three is nine. Okay, and, like, and, like, stuff like that. Like, it doesn't involve that. Um, I do more division than, well, no, no, it, does, it doesn't involve that. It doesn't involve any math, even, um, believe it or not. Does it involve what? Amelia Shepherd, I don't know who Amelia Shepherd is. His morning, uh, I, sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm not, my wife would get that reference. Um, I, I refuse to watch that show. Me too. Yeah, yeah, I refuse to watch it. No, thank you. I'm, I'm very thankful and happy that she enjoys that. I, I wouldn't enjoy it, and so I don't watch it. Would you just put, I, I, yeah, I know. Literally, all my sister, my sister watches on our network. Like, crazy now, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, and like, just like I have shows I like that my wife doesn't like. The Office. All right, that happens. Does she yeah. like The Office? She likes it not as much as I do. She actually hasn't seen the whole thing yet. The working office. on it. Working on it. Okay, anyway, anyway. It's yeah, so like my morning routine. Like you know, like I wake up, and then depending on whether or not like I showered the night before, because sometimes I I shower the night before, sometimes I shower the morning of. Um, I. Um, like I'll rinse through my hair and get it going because I get terrible bedhead to where like it gets like stuck a certain direction. Yeah. Seems like if I wear like a hat, like I don't have hair to where like if I wear a hat and I take it off, my hair is fine or I can like comb real quick. Nah, like I have to get the entire thing soaked again. Go back to square one and then it's good. So I either 
uh, shower or rinse my hair, which helps me kind of wake up and I kind of put some water on my face and whatnot, so that helps. And then, you know, you dress, um, put on shirt and tie, whatnot. Um, I mean, there's and then I, in Mr. Pulse's water that makes him just super happy. Probably, probably. It's probably my water. Let me taste it. And then, um, and then I, then I go downstairs and I eat breakfast, um, and I read for a bit, um, and then, yeah, and then I, I drive to school. Yeah, that's something. So, like, what if something off. threw that whole schedule off? Um, I'm actually, if, if, if my schedule gets thrown off, I'm a little frazzled for the day yeah, to start yeah. with until I kind of get back in my rhythm. Now, Mr. Pastor, so, so like especially my reading, if I, if, if I don't get to my reading, um, in the, every morning, then like, I have to kind of, I, I have to get back to it, otherwise I'm just not me. So then really. if a bunch of people just like start showing you off, like all day, we're just, everybody's doing something that just goes off just a little bit. It just, it just goes downhill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all goes down from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not quite as, uh, as, as much as me as I would normally be. Yeah, and then also like, I, I've been up since 4:25 this morning, huh? so like, I've had plenty of time to wake up. So. Why have you been up? Um, I'm pretty Get up sure at 4:25? Like oh up. heavens no. Okay. No, no, no. This week we have, we have two days for girls soccer, and so because I'm a jerk. Um, I'm mean, sorry. Their coach is a jerk. Whoever that is, okay. Um, you. And um, guy's a nerd. And so, I mean, all these nerds. I heard, I heard he reads in the morning. Probably. Okay. And so, like, and so I have to get. So I get here like five twenty, five thirty. So I can make sure everything's ready to go for our six a.m. practice. What's and your so, address? How long time? Uh, no, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Just follow. Hey, like sorry, what? We'll no, we're having important conversation. Yes, good luck. Okay, Seth. So, on the radio, there's this uh -huh. commercial, like, my children have to, like, it's like the act, one of the actors involved is like, my children have never seen it. I'm like, what? Shameful. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's like, Shameful. What? He was going back to the conversation earlier from when uh, I had said that my wife had not seen The Office. Dude, okay. That was like, that was I a used while to watch ago. it when I was on, like, Basic TV at like three in the morning or whatever it was. I would always wake up to like George Lopez and be on after it. <laughs> George Lopez. Right. Anyway, okay, going back to this. Does 121 plus 400 equal 529? No. no, last I checked, it's 521. So those are not equal. Now, 521 is less than or greater than 529? It's less than it. Okay, so 529 is greater. So is this, does this make a right triangle? No. We can definitively say it does not make a right triangle. So tell whether it makes a right triangle? No. Now, we can also actually find out what kind of triangle it makes. Oh, duh. Wow. Y'all are harping on us for that, but you got it wrong. I do. I, I make mistakes. Yeah. Do I get Okay. You get imaginary bonus points. Good work. All right. Um, so we can actually, we can actually tell what type of triangle this is based upon our result from adding these together and comparing it. If this c squared is bigger, it's going to be obtuse. So this is an obtuse triangle, meaning that this angle which would normally be a right angle and a right triangle, is actually an obtuse angle. It's bigger than 90. If c squared was smaller, which is not, but if it was smaller, it would be an acute angle. Here's why this works. You guys remember that flashlight trick we did a few weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where I, we, I showed, um, I had the flashlight going, and we said, okay, the bigger the angle, the bigger the opposite side, right? And we said the smaller the angle, the smaller the opposite side, right? Yeah. Show okay. me again. Now, What's gonna happen if I make this side bigger? What has to happen to the opposite angle? It makes it, it has to get bigger. bigger. It has to get bigger as well and become obtuse. Or if I make the side smaller, it has to get smaller and become acute, right? From 90. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if this side becomes bigger, well, what's gonna make something squared bigger? Well, making the actual number bigger, right? Because like four squared is gonna be bigger than three squared, won't it? because four is bigger than three. So if I say which square is gonna be bigger? 10 squared or nine squared? Yeah. Which square is gonna be bigger, 10 squared or nine, nine squared? Square. 10 squared, why? Because 10 is bigger than nine. 
Which square is going to be bigger, 30 squared or 20 squared? 20. 30 squared because 30 is bigger than 20. C. So here, when C squared is bigger than A squared plus B squared, instead of equal, so in a right triangle they're equal, when C squared is bigger, that means C is bigger, which then tells us the opposite angle is no longer a right angle, but it's actually bigger. Does that make sense or no? Let me, let me say that again. Okay, let me say that again, guys. If C squared is bigger than A squared plus B squared, that means C is bigger, which means this opposite angle is no longer 90, but it's actually bigger, it's obtuse. The other direction of that is saying, hey, if C squared is smaller than A squared plus B squared, that means C is smaller, which means this opposite angle is smaller. So it's now less than 90, it's acute. That's crazy. So what type of triangle would this one be, we said? Obtuse. It'd be obtuse because C squared is bigger, meaning the actual side length is bigger than it um, would be if it were a right triangle. That's a good album. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. By Nirvana. Okay, anyway. Mm. No one gets it. Continuing on. Example five. Can segments with lengths 11.2, 6.5, and 7.1 all in inches form a triangle? If so, what type? Okay, do you guys remember seeing if things would form a triangle before? What were we doing that day? Okay, Kenny. You add them up, and if the two legs are bigger than the um, converse, or not the converse, the... Um, the biggest? Yeah. If the two smaller are bigger than the biggest, or, yeah. If they're bigger, then it's a triangle. If they're lower or equal to, they're not. Exactly right. That was the day we did these rulers, and we came up here, and we tried to compare them. So Kenny nailed that. We add the two smallest lengths. So which two are we adding here? 7.1 .1 to 6.5. 7.1 and 6.5. So we add these, and what do we get? 13.6. 13.6. So does this make a triangle? Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's bigger than 11.2. So the first question, can it form a triangle? Yeah. Well, yes. Now, what's our second question is asking? What type? What type? Okay. Well, what did we just learn for how we can tell what type of triangle this forms? Okay, Kenny, thank you for raising your hand. Yeah, let's plug it into a squared plus b squared and c squared and see what happens. If it equals, if c squared is bigger, or if c squared is smaller. Now, I don't have a picture here, do I? You don't need one. Why don't we need one, Kenny? Because we have two smaller and the bigger. Okay, so where is 11.2 going to go? C. C, because it has to be. Because, unless you must rain down, let's forget. If it were to be the hypotenuse, it has to be the longest side, right? So it would have to go in the c spot. So we could have 6.5 squared plus 7.1 squared equals 11.2 squared. <laughs> I remember that day you were telling your class and I walked by. Yes, yes. All right, whoa. All right. It's true. All right. So we actually go through and square things. Who can tell me what 6.5 squared is? Okay, Seth. 42.25. 42.25. What's 7.1 squared? Who can tell me that? 50.41. Who can tell me what 11.2 squared is? 125.44. So now we add these together and we say, okay, well, what is it? So what's 42.25 plus 50.41? 92.66. Very good, Presley. Now, what is that compared to 125.44? It's less than it, right? So is C squared bigger or smaller than A squared plus B squared? C squared is bigger. So what type of triangle does this make? Obtuse. Very good. If C squared is bigger... 
That means the hypotenuse, or what would be the hypotenuse, is bigger, so it's not a hypotenuse, actually, because it's not a right triangle. Meaning the opposite angle is bigger than 90. It's now an obtuse angle. I just bumped into my board there on accident. Yes? Oh. Yeah. Well, you're aspiring for greatness today. All right. Any question on this one? All right, let's try this next one. Example six. Yes, happy birthday, Landon. Wand on. Okay. Example six. This is our last one for the uh, for the notes for the section. I was going to say Dave, but that's not true. Okay. Can segments with lengths 10, 2 times the square to 41, and 8 form a triangle? If so, what type? So this is the same type of question we just had, right? What's different, though? There's a square root. Can we tell which one of these is the biggest side, the medium side, and the small side? We have to figure out what that, we have to Yeah, we have to figure out what two, 2 times the square root of 41 is. Yeah. Now, is 41 a perfect square? No. No. Now, is simplifying this going to help at all? No. Would, would 7 times the square root of something help at all even? No. No. And actually, you can't simplify that because 41 is prime. But... What we, what we want to do is type it in a calculator. Just straight up, type it in a calculator. Now, if you have an iPhone and you're typing in your calculator, here's how you would do that. It's a little inferior to a normal scientific um, that I have or to the Android ones, honestly. But you push 41, you have your phone sideways, and you hit the square root button. Then you multiply by 2. So if you have the iPhone calculator, you would hit 41, hit the square root, and then times by 2. If you have an Android or a scientific, you'd push 2 times the square root of 41. 3,362. That doesn't sound accurate. I got 9.45. I think you squared 41 and multiplied by 2. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, yes, what did you get, Elizabeth? I got 9.05. Oh, yeah, you were standing next to me. Now I think I'm doing this right. Okay. Did anyone else get something different or can confirm 9.05 approximately? Seth? Okay, but, uh, oh, so you tried to simplify the radical? Okay, there's no perfect squares that go into 41, though, are there? No, I already did them all. Okay, Bailey? I get the same thing as the one. Okay, cool, we can confirm it then, okay? You guys get the same thing? I got 6.4. 6.4, 12 point eight. okay, what kind of calculators are you guys using? What phones? I Yep, so on an iPhone, you have to hit 41 first, then do the square root, and then multiply by 2. So it can't handle multiple operations at once on the iPhone. Yeah, um, okay. Okay. I, what I did was, was I squared everything first. I actually get 12.8. That's how I got. So those who got 6.4, you would just need to multiply by 2 afterwards. If you got 6.2, 6.4, you just didn't multiply by 2, I think. No, what I think, I did square root by 1 times 2. Ah. And then I did 2 times square root by 1. Yes, yes. Yep, that's... How does that make a difference? So, what your phone did as you typed it in there, Elizabeth, then, was the first time it typed it in, or the second time it typed it in as this. The first time it typed it in as this. Uh, it thought the 2 was part of the radical. And so it gave you the square root of 82. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah, really so, Bailey, that's what would have been happening to you as well. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, can you wait like three minutes? All right. Um, so now, we, do we know which one's the biggest, smallest, and medium? Yes. Yeah. So can we figure out if this makes a triangle? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who can help me set it up to figure out if it makes a triangle? Dylan. Not quite. To figure out if it even makes a triangle. Because if it doesn't make a triangle, oh, should yeah. we even bother seeing what type it would be? No. no. Very good. Out of the two smallest, so what's 10 plus 8? 18. 18. Is 18 bigger than 12.8? Yes. Now, 12.8, is it exactly 12.8? No, but it's, it's close. Okay. And is it, uh, is it easy enough for us to tell that 18's greater than anything even close to 12.8? Yeah. 
So we can say, yes, it does make a triangle. So I have to say what type. Now here's the thing. As we go through and say what type, who can help me set it up? I got this. Okay, Kenny. Okay, so Kenny said 12.8 squared. Here's the thing though, is it exactly 12.8? No, no, it's approximate. That's approximately 12.8. So, when we're doing this and we're trying to figure out is it equal, less than, or greater, we need to be very, very exact. Because if we're off by even just a little bit, would that throw this off here? Yes. Yeah, because even as little as a 0.1 difference or less can make it, instead of being equal, being less or greater. So instead of using this approximate here, we actually want to use the 2 times the square root of 41 mm -hmm. and square it like we did in our world. We want to go back to the exact one for this one. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'll show us exactly why, that's the, why it's important on this problem on others. Hey, Jason. All right. So what is 8 squared? Or sorry, we're saying, does it equal? What is 8 squared, though? 64. What is 10 squared? 100. And we're seeing, does this equal? And then 2 times the square root of 41 squared. We're going to write that twice, right? Okay. So that's 2 times the square root of 41 times 2 times the square root of 41. Okay, we can square the entire thing. What's 2 times 2? 4. 4. So we're going to have 64 plus 100 equals actually what is 64 plus 100 we can 164. add those 164 four. equals four times what's the square root of 41 times the square root of 41 okay the square root of 1600 what 81 what is the square root of 1681 41 hey are we noticing square root times itself gave us the normal number if you catch that, could we just call this 4 times 41? Yeah, if you're catching that, you're multiplying a square root by itself, you can just write the normal number. Okay? Now, what is 4 times four, uh, 41? 164. So does this equal? So what type of triangle does this make? It makes a right triangle, because it is equal. It's not right. It's not left. It's not left. It's not left. It's not upside down. It's right. Now, can somebody real quick tell me what 12.8 squared would have been? Um, 163.84. If we had called this 12.8 and then said it's 163.84, would we have gotten the same answer? No. No, we would have thought this was an acute triangle. Very good, because c squared would be smaller. So that'd give us a different answer. So that's why we need to put the exact one in here. The approximate was good enough for work, figuring out if it is a triangle. But for this part, it's not good enough. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, I'm going to assign the rest of this worksheet. We're going to work on this for quite a while. And then we're going to start these 6.2 modes, okay? No. Good luck.